In this video, we're gonna go through some of the standout features from D5 Render's recent updates. This video will give you a solid idea of how to take your visuals to the next level. You'll learn how to transform images from this to this. Let's start with importing models to D5. You can easily import models into D5 Render from programs like SketchUp, Revit, or Rhino, and the process is pretty seamless with the Live Sync feature. With Live Sync, you can send your models straight from SketchUp, Revit, or other supported software into D5 Render. You can apply materials, tweak the lighting, and see all of the changes live. I usually turn on two-point perspective for cleaner verticals, and I like setting the focal length to 30mm for now, and then add a scene. I would recommend creating multiple scenes. It doesn't have to be perfect right now, it's just to get a feel of your ideas, and so that you know which parts of the model will need more detail and attention later. Now let's start adding materials. D5 Render comes with a wide range of built-in materials like glass, metal, fabric, and emissive surfaces all of which you can customize easily in real time to match the look and feel of your desired scene. Adding materials in D5 Render is so fast, so intuitive, you just have to drag and drop it from the library and then you can fine tune properties like roughness, reflection and color to get the look that you want. Though it is limited in the free version, if you do upgrade to the Pro you'll have full access to all of the materials and all of the assets. So I'm gonna skip adding furniture as that has been covered on the channel but it is worth mentioning that the asset library is huge and new assets and models are always being added. But my favorite thing is that you can also customize the materials on any of these assets so really your options are even bigger. So I can change the material of the cushion and the sofa. Everything in my house is white, grey and sad beige. Light fixtures in D5 Render come with lights already set up and you can easily adjust the scale to make them a little bit shorter to fit your scene better. But I also want to show you how easy it is to batch import PBR materials. It only takes a few clicks and then you can quickly apply them to your models. Also you can just drag and drop your texture maps like base map, normal and roughness onto D5 and they'll be ready to go. But what if you only have a texture and you don't have any maps? Well, you can use the AI generated texture maps within D5. What? 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 How crazy is that? Give it a minute or so and it'll be ready to use. D5 Render 210 brings in real-time path tracing for global illumination. So to try it out, just head to the menu bar preferences, rendering, and toggle on real-time path tracing. So once you do that, the viewport will instantly update to show the enhanced GI calculations. You can also fine-tune settings like GI precision, reflection depth, and sample count from the display menu in the top right corner. Keep in mind though that higher settings mean longer rendering times, so it's all about finding the right balance between quality and performance for your project. These examples from the D5 website show the path tracing really well. You can see how the reflections on the metal objects and the tiles just look way more realistic. It's very subtle, but it's very, very important. Now, if you're someone that isn't quite familiar with all of the settings just yet, or maybe again, you're a beginner and you just want to create something really quick and you don't want to spend too much time on it. D5 Studio now has built-in environment and effects presets to make everything easier and faster for both indoor and outdoor scenes. So you can easily test out different looks without much hassle. I would recommend rotating the HDRI and the sun settings to get a better light. I also turned on the AO overlay which enhances shadows in the crevices, in the corners, and it just adds depth to the image. I've tested out the render and oh my god, I am so happy with it. Like honestly, for a test render, this is incredible. Now let's move on to the environment. First up, there's the terrain generator which gives you a quick way to add natural landscapes to your scene. Now when you click on the terrain button, you'll see a window with three tabs, sculpt, paint and manage. Next, head to sculpt if you want to fine tune the terrain. There are options like raise, lower, erase, smooth and flatten, which are pretty intuitive to use. Now if you don't feel like starting from scratch, D5 also offers ready-made height maps, 
In the material section, you'll also find texture templates like deserts, lush fields, and rocky mountains. They've made it so that you can customize almost anything so it feels right for you and for your project. My PC also goes a little crazy when I'm using the terrain tool, but I'm also trying to screen record and like share this in a video so it does take up a good chunk of my RAM. Still, it's something to keep in mind if you are running into performance issues. Now can we talk about scatter templates? I mean, are we even surprised at this point? So you can scatter based on either material or model, you can use the templates, customize them, or you can make your own templates completely. By default, a scatter area is created as one big zone, but you can divide it into smaller sub areas to scatter different models in different spots. You can use built-in presets or import your own color maps to control how it's split up. When you are ready to add in plants or trees, click assets and choose from the nature category. You can add up to 15 different types in a single scatter area. So I'm gonna use the presets because like I said, I don't know that much about plants. I don't know which plants go together. I'm gonna use this dense forest all around the edge of the model and you can see in their preset they've used low poly trees which makes sense because they're just background trees they have a lot of presets for waterfront landscape, urban landscape, flower gardens, you name it I'm gonna try a few different presets to see which one works for my model I eventually selected Natural Meadow 12. If any of the presets are too dense, you can reduce it. When you have rough or empty patches in your grass, I feel like it looks more natural. And then for the grass that is near the water, I thought I could use something a bit more dense and a bit more wild. I actually wanted to remove two plants from the preset, so you can just select it and delete. Instead of those, I wanted to add these two plants, Vaccinium. I read that they grow in similar landscapes, so I thought they fit the scene perfectly. But as you can see, they're a little too dense and big, so you can reduce the probability of them. And then reduce the scale of each plant. I also added them to the other grass preset, just for continuity in the red dirt. If there are spots where you don't want grass or plants, like on paths or hardscapes, the cull effect helps keep those areas clear. After you've created your cull zone, head up to the menu bar to adjust the cull range. And don't forget to turn on the falloff area. This lets you soften the transition between scattered and non-scattered areas by tweaking distance, density, scale and noise. Now I'm creating a custom scatter, combining both grass materials. Gonna add a couple of pine trees and some broadleaf trees. Let's reduce the density because we can't see anything. This house is supposed to be hidden in the forest, but this is not what I had in mind. There are a lot of settings to help make the scatter feel more natural. One of them is these presets or custom black and white distribution maps to control plant density. So lighter areas mean more coverage and darker areas mean less, just like a normal Photoshop mask. These are great for creating more realistic, varied placement of trees and shrubs. If there's an asset that pops up somewhere and you're like, I don't want this, it's not in the right place, all you have to do is double click on that asset and this will appear where it asks you if you want to detach it from the scatter. You can see that that asset has been moved into its own separate element so you can move it, scale it or just delete it. Now with any templates, I would recommend that you still place individual assets because it's a great way to add focus and improve your composition. However, a little tip from me is Try not to mix too many types of trees because it can make the scene look a little off. I usually like to describe the environment to ChatGPT, honestly, I'm, I'm not even joking, and I will just ask for suggestions on typical trees and shrubs for that area. It just helps me create something that feels more natural and coherent. Another feature is the AI atmosphere match. It's a button located at the top right. So upload a reference image to match the current scene's viewport 
So this feature will adjust all of the parameters in the D5 environment panel, including weather settings, and it will recreate the sky effect based on the reference image. It does this by either matching it with Geo and Sky or choosing a suitable HDRI. This is the reference image that I've uploaded and honestly I'd say it's pretty spot on. I would probably just tweak the sun settings so that I can get a better light. I wanted to also show you two ways to achieve a nighttime render. The first one is using a sunset HDRI that is already default in D5 and then just lowering the brightness of the sun and the background. Turn on some artificial lights inside the building, some fill lights around the environment and voila! You have a very simple nighttime render. However, in the newest update of D5 Render, they've now introduced custom nighttime. So if we go back to environment, click on custom, then custom night, you can see all of the settings to create the perfect nighttime render. You can adjust settings like the moonlight intensity, radius, starlight intensity, you can even add clouds, fog, Milky Way. The only issue that I found with this method is that I felt like it was very very dark. I couldn't get it to light up as well as the other method. If I increased the exposure it felt more flat but I've exported both renders so you can let me know which one is your favorite. Once you've rendered all of your images, there comes the post-processing work which can be time consuming and super repetitive. But D5 Render 210 introduces AI power tools all within D5 that really streamline the process and make it way faster. So one of these is AI in painting, which fills in missing elements or improves them, like the sky, vegetation or water, saving you the hassle of manually placing assets. That said, AI can still be a bit of a hit or miss, like in one of my tests, it thought that a mountain was just a bunch of trees, so it didn't really pick up that it was actually terrain. So yeah, it's not always spot on, but it, when it does work, it definitely saves time. So I in-painted the water, and as you can see, it looks so realistic. It even matched the same colors as the trees and the sky. I also tried the AI enhancer, and as you can see, it really brings the image to life. If you zoom in, there's a lot of detail and enhancement. But it's AI, so it can get some things wrong, but it's easily fixable and highly addictive. So let's try style transfer. Let's go for a realistic spring look. Okay, that honestly looks so pretty. Look at all the flowers. It definitely has that AI vibe to it. Do you know what I mean? Like some images you can look at them and say, yeah, this is definitely AI. It's so fun to see your building in a different style or environment without any effort. I tried the AI enhancer on a different image and it just looks sharper, cleaner and more professional. You can especially see that in the grass. D5 is absolutely crushing it. All of the features are integrated within D5. You don't have to download anything extra. Most of the features are free. You have a huge library of assets. You just can't complain. Thank you to D5 for sponsoring this video and of course for all of their work and improvements to D5. And thank you guys for watching. I've missed you guys so much. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I am Rasha Shururu and I will see you next time.